Hello everyone, we're now going to continue and conclude for the time being our discussion of what we mean by development, a key part of the first chapter of the textbook. We'll come back later on in the course and think about this in terms of some applications, of course. But now what we're going to do is to move from the foundations, the philosophical foundations that we established in the previous episode, namely Amartya Sen's capabilities to function approach, and see what this might look like with respect to the international development targets of the international community agreed by the United Nations. And currently we have the sustainable development goals that have been unanimously agreed by the United Nations. And they're a set of ambitious goals that are to be achieved between this period of um, 2015 to uh, 2030. So we only have 10 years left to achieve them. And so these built on the Millennium Development Goals and in some sense uh, tried to address some criticisms that had been uh, leveled, if you want, on the MDG um, process. So let's first start with a review in a sense, historical review of the MDGs. They had seven goals plus an additional goal for a global partnership for development, a much more active development assistance, um, um, both qualitatively as well as quantitatively from the high income countries. But to eradicate poverty and hunger, achieve universal primary education, promote gender equality and empower women, reduce child mortality, improve maternal health, and combat major diseases, HIV, AIDS, malaria, and others, ensure environmental sustainability and the global partnership. So this was the big sweeping um, goals. And of course, it was thought that these could not be reached in this period of time. So that as a result, there were some targets that were set. And then with respect to the targets, there were some indicators for how we were doing on the target. But the shorthand idea was having poverty, cutting poverty in half. And that had two sides. First, cut income poverty in half, the fraction of people living under what was then $1.25 a day as a measured, um, but uh, I'm now adjusts to $1.90, um, and also cutting hunger in half. So we can ask how we did. The fact is that there was a dramatic reduction in income poverty. And so that the goal was reached two or three, depending upon the, how you look at the data, two or three years um, prior to the 2015 um, deadline. These were with a baseline of 1990. And so that, on the other hand, the progress on hunger was still substantial, but they didn't come uh, that close to cutting hunger in half. Hunger is a stubborn poverty problem. And there were still 900 million people living in hunger in 2015. Um, that uh, number has subs subsequently fell close to 800 million, so that was continued progress. Unfortunately, it seems to be ticking up again in the, the, the last year. So um, in other areas, progress was made. Under five mortality dropped a lot, but didn't come anywhere near the two-thirds cut that was targeted. Maternal deaths were cut in about half, which is progress, but didn't come near the three-quarters cut. They had a drinking water target that was met, but sanitation target was not met. There were some great progress made against diseases such as tuberculosis. There was a lot of progress on primary enrollments, good progress, but in the end, there were still 57 million people, by one estimate, 57 million children of primary school age who were not even enrolled in school, generally among the poorest of the poor. And actually, development assistance has been and is now still probably falling in real terms. So that the Millennium Development Goals were also criticized for being insufficiently comprehensive. And I'm not going to go through all of these criticisms now, but they're summarized on this slide. And so 
I suggest that it is worth thinking about whether the sustainable development goals, as you'll see them, did or did not meet and address these criticisms, or to what extent they may have met and addressed these criticisms. And these criticisms are very wide um, ranging, and it may be unreasonable to think of some of these as part of global development goals. Um, others are quite obviously important, such as thinking about the intensity of poverty rather than just a single poverty line, something we'll come back to when we talk about poverty and economic development. But I suggest that you think about these, I think they're worth thinking about carefully, and consider, as I say, whether the SDGs address them. And it's a way of thinking systematically about the SDGs as well. Well, these were adopted by the UN in 2015, and these were things to be achieved by 2030. So we only have 10 years left as of now. Um, it featured 17 goals, 169 targets, so it was really very um, broad, and it, it achieved some criticism for being, in a sense, too diffuse to follow the, the, um, 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 the uh, individual results with any focus. Um, to have an ongoing idea of how the SDGs are being attained, you can look at the UN site, and, um, which has uh, annual reports, or just Google SDGs. So quite importantly, as I was um, alluding to a moment ago, there are three underlying principles that are new for the SDGs that were not there for the MDGs. And these were, in some sense, intended to get at, to some degree, some of the criticisms. So the first is the universality principle. So the MDGs apply to every nation, not just the developing nation. So it's not saying, here we have the developed nations, and here we have the developing uh, countries, and these developing nations are those that have to achieve these goals. Some of these goals have to be um, achieved in rich countries also, inevitably. Also, the integration principle. Here the idea is that you have to achieve all goals, and to do so, it's necessary to account for their interrelationships these different goals are intertwined, interwoven, as we'll call it in a specific sense fairly soon in the course, complementarities, that is to say, these goals are um, complementary with each other. And then finally, the transformation principle. So you can't think about this as making piecemeal steps, but this requires um, complete transformation. And here are the icons of the 17 goals. And you'll see these in different contexts. As it turns out, the first draft of these icons was actually put together by a GW economics grad. Had just graduated from uh, GW, and one of her first things that she did was to work on the development of the SDGs in that, um, as a member of that uh, team. So here we have the 17 goals. Um, you can review these. I will not um, spell them all out here. I think it's worth looking at these goals and getting a sense of them. Um, one thing that is um, striking um, is, first of all, that there's a lot on health. In some sense, the Millennium Development Goals had at least three in, um, of the goals about health, three and a half in the sense that hunger was half of one goal. They had one environment goal. Interestingly, with the 17 sustainable development goals, several are now specifically looking at the need for environmental sustainability in one way or another. They also had goals regarding addressing violence and so on. So we had a wide variety of goals, a broader set of of uh, goals, urban, and so on. So that was an important um, distinction. And then there were very specific targets. So we have, as with the MDGs, overarching goals, specific targets, and then indicators to see how we're doing in our way to achieving those goals. And 
rather than go through all of these targets, I think they're worth looking at to understand how these things are being measured and evaluated. And so I would like to offer a discussion topic for you on the sustainable development goals. And so here are some of the questions that you could think about addressing. What are some key similarities and differences? To do that, you'll look at some of the material in the text summarized in the slides in a little more detail. To what extent do the same criticisms apply? Um, if you think one or more of the criticisms um, were addressed, at least in part, explain that. Um, how significant is adopting the universality principle? How important is it? What does it mean? If you think a new criticism is relevant that is specific to the SDGs but may not have applied to the MDGs, that would be certainly of interest. And so regardless of your specific views about the SDGs, you might not like them, though that's possible. Do you think it's better to have these goals, or perhaps any goals, rather than not to specify international development goals? Something to think about. How? Why not? And if you have a proposal for how to remedy a problem that you would specify here um, that has been raised, that it's worth um, thinking about um, as well. And so I'll leave this as a um, discussion topic that's important to think about. And so I will end our discussion here about the meaning of development. Thank you.